Welcome to Oh Hell No with Nicole. You got it right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> she is the president of Taste of Reality out in Los Angeles. So she's a L.A. girl. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So we're going to delve into your business here today. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> so I want to start off by asking you, um, what did you go to school for? Uh, communications, okay. video production and broadcasting, and then also advertising as well. Okay. So when you were in school or when you first started college, did, um, what was your, what did you envision yourself doing, you know, once you graduated? Like what was your dream or your, you know, what you thought you wanted to do? I thought I wanted to be a film editor. Really? Wow. Yes. I was really into video production and I loved the editing process and basically crafting a story out of all of these pieces. So I really thought that's what I was going to do. Wow. So yeah. what took you off that path? Travel. <laughs> After I graduated from college, I wanted to go travel around Europe. So I took a temp job and that temp job ended up leading into a marketing job. And I ended up really loving marketing communications because it became an expansion of everything I loved in the realm of storytelling and communications, but in terms of a brand. And so I continued on this path of um, staying in the business world and, and fostering that marketing communications career. I did also happen to go backpacking around Europe for a couple months. I worked for a company that was great enough to let me go for a leave of absence to go travel. And when I came back, I was fortunate to have a job. And they, get, they got me going into marketing. And the rest is history. Wow, that is so amazing. Like, I, sometimes people tell me stuff and I'm like, how did they, like, stumble up into that? situation like you know to get a job yeah. where you know you get to do what you love and they're like oh you know what you can go ahead your job will still be here that is amazing I know I was very fortunate I had some really nice mentors and human resources that saw a lot of potential in me and so like I said they offered the leave of absence because I was just gonna quit and I never would have asked you know, or thought to ask a company, oh, hey, can I take a couple months off to go travel? Right. And I was only, you know, 22. So um, they were like, no, we want to keep you. So we'll give you the time off and come back and you'll have your job. And, and they really actually saw the potential in me to go into marketing because of um, some of the things I was working on there. Okay. So it really, I, I was really fortunate that way. And then, you know, I really didn't think I would enjoy the business world and marketing. I had no real exposure to it, um, but it fostered a wonderful career for me. So I was very lucky to have a good team in place that helped guide me from the beginning. So what made you decide that, um, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. I kind of want to do my own thing. So I had the idea for Taste of Reality for a couple years and at the time I was working for a digital agency and it was just gnawing at me for a while like I had friends taking me to restaurants around Orange County in LA based on shows they watched which at the time were The Hills and Real Housewives of Orange County and I was like you're really making your you know restaurant decisions based on these shows right. and they were fun experiences and then you know as I talked to more people and found out like they do that too it's just like maybe there's something there so a few years back, I was like, you know what, this idea, I just need to do it. You know, it's been really sitting with me for a while. And everyone I would bounce around the idea to was like, yeah, that's great. Especially reality TV fans. Um, they would, you know, they were especially like in love with the idea. So I finally took the leap and started the business. And it took a while to get the website off the ground. And 
Um, this is the first year I've fully committed to it full time. Mm -hmm. It started off as a part time endeavor. Right, a side hustle, right? Yeah, I exactly. Love side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, it gets to a point where you you have to commit to it, or yeah. it's not, you know, it's not going to live up to its full potential without your full time. So I finally got to that point this year. Nice. So tell us exactly what a taste of reality is. Taste of Reality is a website for fans to find all the locations and businesses on popular reality TV shows like Real Housewives, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Southern Charm, Love and Hip Hop, and all the big Bravo, E! and VH1 shows, essentially. So we capture all of the places that they go, from restaurants and bars to hotels to the plastic surgeons they go visit and the crazy you know, activities they do along the way. And in addition to providing all the business information, we also write a scene description of what went down at that location. So fans can kind of relive the moment, if you will. We catalog who was in the scene, what episode it appeared in. So you really get a, a good sense of um, the action that happened there in case you can't quite remember. And we try to quote like the funniest line from the scene and whatnot. And so there's a huge database of locations that we provide that you can find by show or, you know, type of location. And then, you know, in addition to that, we're doing these custom tours that are inspired by the shows. So it's, you know, the city that they live in, or if they go on a cast trip somewhere extravagant, then we try and recap, re recap those trips as well. Wow. So you can kind of follow in their footsteps, if you will. And then we do, you know, fun lists of types of locations and, you know, just random fun articles that pertain to the, the businesses themselves. We do reality checks where we'll go and review a, a business and see what the experience is like with that business. So how do you decide on what locations to feature? Because there's so many different things going on on so many different shows. Right. Well, we try and prioritize the show. So we capture based on all the popular shows, you know, the, the more highly rated ones or the ones that are really being talked about in social media since obviously they have a, a strong following. So we'll capture every single location within an episode and every season. And then in terms of featuring on our blog and um, the reality checks, it kind of varies. Like we've just part of it has been based on where we are and um you know, what city we're in and what we're able to do. And then some of it is based on, you know, if it's a celebrity owned business, like we went to cut fitness and took a class with Eddie judge mm. and that was really fun and hard wow. <laughs> kicked my butt. It was a great class. Uh, so we, we just try and balance it out between the type of experience that we can, we can really convey in the review. So do you like, um, put together package deals for the guests? Is that how it works? Like, okay, so you went and you took a class with Eddie. So would you, like, um, work out something with him to bring, like, a group of people out on a tour and create some kind of a package for the experience? Is that how it works? We would love to get there. Right now it's all just a self-guided tour. So it's really just inspired ideas for you to be able to do on your own. So we're trying to do them based on uh, a day in the life or what you could do in a day if you had a day around L.A. and you love the Kardashians. Mm -hmm. Here's kind of like breakfast, morning, lunch, afternoon, dinner, night. You know, here's different things across the day that you could do mm -hmm. that are inspired on the show. So do you find that most of these places, because, I mean, for me, I love reality TV, so I watch all of these shows, and I always think to myself, oh, man, those places are probably so high-end or whatever. Mm, what, mm -hmm. what have you found based on, you know, your research of, like, going to these places and things like that? Do you know, it's amazing. That's a great question because a lot of them are just actually local businesses. You know, they go to a lot of uh, celebrity hotspots, if you will, but they also go to local coffee shops and boutiques. And so it, they're very accessible and they're really just small businesses that, you know, are opening their doors to the camera crews. And they are usually in a 
proximity to where, you know, the cast members live. So these businesses are are very accessible. They're not always super high-end lux where they're not affordable, Mm -hmm. you know. So they're really a lot of everyday places that you could visit. Wow. Okay. So how is this business, um, like, how do you make money, if if I could ask you that? I mean, I don't want to, sure. you know, but how do so you make money from that? Right now, it's traffic through the website, and then we also offer Amazon products. You know, we're an affiliate par- partner, so anyone that buys something through Amazon will make a commission off of that as well. But most of it is all advertising and promotion on oh, the site. Okay, that makes great sense. Mm-hmm. So in expansion, what are some of the things that you're looking to do that you are willing to share? Because I know sometimes it's good to like keep your ideas to yourself because you don't want anybody like, you know what I mean? I mean, right. I put up a post today that said, um, if Rihanna said, oh, there's too many makeup lines out there, I'm not going to start mine, you know, where would she be? Sure. So there could be like so many people doing the same thing and still be successful. But still, sometimes you want to protect your you know, mm-hmm. your, you know, your, your business. Plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that we really feel like this is a travel site, mm-hmm. you know, because it's, it's fun to see how people live in certain cities. And since so many of these shows are based in cities and if I'm, you know, based in LA, but I'm watching these New York shows, you know, I really get a sense of, Hey, there's some cool places that I've seen on camera that look really cool vibe wise or interesting. That sounds like a fun experience to have or whatnot. So we want to continue to really foster the tours. And to your point, like you suggested with cut fitness, really start to make it an actionable thing to, to be able to present to people. So that would be our big next yeah. step. Cause I think that would be really cool if I could like, cause you know, some of these vacations that these people go on, you're like, wow, I know. And right. You <laughs> could kind of like organize, you know, okay, we're going to do the Beverly Hills, you know, you know, vacation to wherever they went and kind of like mimic it and get a good deal and work it out with the, the Island, mm-hmm. you know, it could be good. Exactly. Yeah, and that's where we see it going. Because obviously, the more we can help present the experience, the better, you know, for fans and for us and, um, and the businesses itself, you know, all these destinations. Yeah, we, we totally love that stuff. We love watching, you know, these people live the fabulous life. And if we can right. actually get to experience it, that's even better. So um, Instagram. So how do you feel like Instagram um, is helping the business. Do you feel like it? Cause for me, just before I let you answer, I'm like using Instagram too. And it is so hard to build an audience. I mean, I don't yes. know. Are these people buying followers? Cause it's, right. It's so difficult. I, I see you hustling. I mean, you're, yes. <laughs> you're posting a lot. You're doing all the right things. And right. I agree. It is really hard. And, um, You know, I think just like any other business, there's so many moving parts to running a business and social media is a full-time job in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And we've had some luck on Instagram, but I think because we're a blog and, you know, we're linking to articles, we tend to do better, you know, on Facebook and Twitter because of the direct connection. Whereas Instagram, it's it's just so photo heavy. People just want to like a photo. I and know. so getting that extra click over to something else is a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're learning as we go, just yeah. like I'm sure you are, Absolutely. what works and what doesn't. But yeah. I think there's definitely a big opportunity for us to take advantage of the medium more. And so we're, we're ramping up in that area for sure. But Instagram is where it's at, where all the celebrities are, right? I mean, I <laughs> so, so you got you to gotta be in there to keep up with all the, the drama that's happening in real time. Right. While the shows are being filmed. <laughs> exactly. You got to be in it to win it. So, you know, it, but it, like you said, it's like a full-time job. I'm telling you, it's like crazy. Yeah. But it is what it is. And I'd rather like have my little 500 followers and know that they're all interested in what I'm posting and stuff rather than, you know, have fake followers or whatever it is, you know? Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think a more engaged in audience is more meaningful than just sheer numbers. Yes, absolutely. 
All right. So because you are with A Taste of Reality, we're going to do the reality wrap up today. Fun. So I think this is going to be so much fun. So um, we're going to start with um, Love and Hip Hop of Hollywood because I'm so bored with that show. And this is going to be really really fast. (laughs) Okay. So um, I caught the Monday's episode and... um, that new guy, Zell. Yes. What is up with him? He's you know, I really, I, I have mixed emotions about him, but I kind of, I kind of love that he's bringing it, and he really has like funny, you know, lines, if you will. But sometimes, like, he's just too extra and yeah. too much. Yeah. I know, and I feel like I feel bad for um, Masika because. Even though, I mean, I don't know. The whole problem with her and Sky is so ridiculous because I feel like that guy isn't anybody's man, okay? Right. That's for exactly. all, right? So they really shouldn't be fighting over that. But aside from that, just, you know, I think she's hurt by the way Zell just flip-flops all over the place. And to me, he looks like an opportunist. Like I agree. You know, he's just trying to capitalize off this moment and 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 stick to whoever's gonna take him to that next level. Mm-hmm. And I feel like she feels hurt. Like, you know, I held you down. I was your friend when no one knew you and you know, you just turned your back on me. Right. Yeah. I agree completely. So. But how much did you love like all the models eating popcorn and treats, watching them <laughs> go at it? I left all the I cutaways know. to everybody just like <laughs> so funny. I know I shouldn't enjoy this, but I secretly <laughs> love it. Like <laughs> they had the best smirks on their face and I was just like I kind of wanted to be in that room when they were shooting that oh. because both of them are so quick, you know? Yes. And so they're both like the ultimate entertainers if you will. So, so I don't from an entertainment perspective, I really enjoyed the scene. Yeah, that was <laughs> but cool. I agree with you. Like on a friendship level, I can see why she would definitely be hurt, and he definitely flipped sides really quick to Team Alexis all of a sudden. Yes. So not really sure where that came from. Yeah. And then here's my my question from that whole thing is, um, okay, if you're friends with someone and they have a problem with someone else that you necessarily don't have a problem with or no is it okay to be friends with them or befriend them what are your thoughts on that no I think that it's okay to be friends with them you know it's like as long as you could separate things right to a certain degree I think that you know if your issue is it is with that one person then it should stay with that person. It doesn't necessarily mean that the other people have to always jump on your side. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like you can, you can have, you can be friends with someone who has a problem with one of your friends. Um, as long as that person knows that that person is not up for discussion, like we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. So. Exactly. And I think, you know, with, like the Mr. Ray thing. If Zell's issues with Mr. Ray, I don't see why he has to make Masika choose between the two or act up because right. she's friends with him. But, you know, the same thing with like Alexis. If Zell wants to be friends with clearly Masika's nemesis all of a sudden, that seems a little bit shady right. in comparison to like, oh, they've always been friends. Right. Do you okay. know what I mean? Yes. So I think the- I think there's a big difference there. Right, right, right. So if they had an existing friendship, it would be okay. But because he's trying to befriend her, knowing that there's an issue, then it's right. a little contrived and, you know, shady. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. So, yeah, that's true. All right, so what do you think about Moniz and, um, is it, it's AD, right? Yeah, AD. AD. Yeah. Do you think Moniz is really, you know, into that whole, you know, scene or she's just doing I whatever? Don't, I don't know. I mean, I think it seems like a lot of the girls on the shows are very fluid that way, mm-hmm. you know, like Miss Nikki Baby and Alexis even. I, I'm not sure to be honest, but I felt like that breakup scene was really hard. So it seemed like they had a genuine relationship. 
I'm not really sure what their status is now. But damn, but how could you just break up like that? Like I know. You know like I'm just gonna move out. Like, really? Can yeah. You talk about this. Right. <laughs> I was just like, okay. And AD was kind of shady going to the club and like, you know, right. hands all over Alexis. And Alexis, is she's a troublemaker. She is. She definitely. She really try to infiltrate but, that whole clique and just mess up everybody. <laughs> but it really seemed so intentional with Tiffany filming. You know, they spent a lot of time like focused on who's, you know, recording them dancing and then. Right. Moniz gets the video and you know it's hard to tell what's What's really going on there but I did think though Moniz was really quiet you know for Moniz like she wasn't fighting too hard which makes me feel like there was a lot of genuine hurt there yeah I'm sure I mean nobody wants to see their Per, the person that they love hooking up with someone else or like actually exactly. you know, hands on it like please I don't even want to see you putting your hands on my husband like on his shoulder right if exactly I, if we go out and he sees someone he knows and they give him a hug if that arm is around his neck too long I'm like wrap that up <laughs> like now <laughs> exactly and if there's problems at home let's talk about it before you just start going and grinding on someone else exactly you know so yeah I don't think that's an excuse yeah, and so after I watched that episode, I was like, I- I'm done with these people. They they are just driving me crazy. Like, I, yeah. I just can't. I'm so bored, like, with the drama yeah. with Zell and the other guy. And why is he constantly lunging at this guy? Like, it's just <laughs> ridiculous. So Yeah, it I, does seem it's getting to the, you know, point where they're coming up with stuff as opposed to it being like real storylines although I do think the Tierra going to rehab intervention was some touching right television you know to come out of that show and you know just the producer's reaction and interaction with her I was just you know yeah that was probably the really heartfelt I thought and um something that I thought was pretty brave for them to show yeah, I on agree. the show. That was the best part of the whole season. Like, at least she's going to get help. And have you seen pictures of her? She looks amazing. Oh, my gosh. Incredible. Yeah. Yes. I always liked her. I thought she was um, really talented when she first came out. And I was like, oh, my gosh, she has such a nice voice. She's so yes. cute. And, you mm-hmm. know, so I was shocked to see her when she first um, made an appearance on this show. How, you know, how much weight she gained and mm-hmm. all of the, you know, surgeries the boobs sometimes when you get um bigger boobs i don't know Mm -hmm. it it can make you look bigger so you have to be careful how how much Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah get something proportioned to your body so you don't look overly you know heavy yeah you know yeah do you know who's really made me like sad to watch is hazel because this girl is trying so hard to prove herself Mm. And is always quoting her stats at everybody. And it just makes me really sad as a female. Like, really? You know, like, her defensiveness and also the hypocrisy with the girl code stuff that she keeps going around talking about. But I don't know. There was just something about her going at Brooke this last week where I was just like, this just makes me sad, you know, to watch her. Like, she's a pretty girl. I'm sure she's smart. And there's a lot of things going for her. But why? You know, it's... Yeah. Get some confidence, you know? <laughs> she is terrible. Hot mess. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't. Whenever she comes on, like, I just get annoyed. Yes. At, like, I can't. Did you see the video scene when they were shooting the video and how oh my gosh. she was? And I know. And she just breaks out into a dance routine and was like, why don't you know this already? It's like, who are you? Right. And then <laughs> to me, I'm like, I got book deals. I got this. I got this. Check my thing. Yeah. And I'm like, well, where? I, I right. see it. You know, can, can you post something so I could see all this great <laughs> stuff? Where is it? Yeah. Yeah. She's out of it's control. Just, and she's just causing a mess in social media. So, I you know, know, it's just her. Well, it sounds like she's not coming back. Really? So. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. She was going at um, Sin today on social media. So. I saw that. I didn't see what 
Sin wrote, but I did see what she responded with. Yeah. She's just on a roll. Messy. Messy. Very. Messy. And Rose is so messy, too. Which, They're both. Rose. Which Rose, Rose? That's her little boyfriend. Oh, geez. He looks. He's so young. He looks too young to be on that show. And he's another opportunist, too. Who meets someone's mom for the first time and is like, yo, let me get a um selfie or let's take a let's do a chat on my right. Snapchat. Like, <laughs> who does that the mom's reaction was pretty priceless at least you know yes. she wasn't having it she was like what the hell is this like no this is not it right <laughs> yeah let's talk about this other guy that you should be with <laughs> I know and that that's a mess too I mean yeah. really how are yeah. you just gonna start going after somebody's man like I know especially after you keep professing how much you love Rose like within a minute you're like oh wait this guy's better it's just terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. But we'll see. Anyway. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll move on. I mean, I got to watch it to the end. I got to know <laughs> how, how this reunion plays out now. So I know, but I read <laughs> that they were going to be fighting. Again. I just hate that. I just wish that they would sit down and let everyone speak so that we can hear everyone's peace. But they're always right. yelling and fighting and the interruptions. And it's just, it's, it gives me a headache. It does. It gets exhausting. And I think it looks too staged sometimes, especially yes. with security is just standing right there now. Right. Like security has much of a role as any of the cast members anymore because right. they're practically in every scene. Exactly. Remember like um, Jerry Springer and then that security guy got his own show because he was <laughs> exactly <on> the <laughs> Exactly. It's ridiculous. That's so funny. All right. So let's move on to Wags of Miami. That is one of my favorite shows i, I love, love this it. show me too i love these ladies so. ashley i love ashley really you love ashley? i do i do love ashley not so much like at the beginning of first season but now i oh, really oh, do love ashley, her ashley yes ashley and darnell those are my two favorites yes, yes, yes exactly yes, 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 you're right yes. i do yes i love ashley darnell um mm -hmm. and I don't know. I kind of, uh, I, I don't know. I have this love hate thing with Astrid. Like I like the way mm. that she goes after her, her work. I like her, her work ethic, you know? Yes. But I think that she's very, um, I don't know, like kind of stuck up in the way mm -hmm. that she looks down on everyone else or kind of mm -hmm. the comments that she makes, like the scene where she kicked, Kayla out of the party that was messed up and it was not yeah. that serious she didn't need to do that but Darnell ran right her damn mouth like why is she yeah. talking so much this season I know and I I'm glad that she admitted that she made that situation messy because she's a real starter of that whole situation right. so I was glad that she at least owned up to it yeah, yeah exactly yeah whereas like you know a lot of times I'll just keep adding fuel to the fire so she just I thought that was pretty going. good but yeah she totally got real <laughs> messy with that one <laughs> she kept going oh that's not what you said at the thing that's not what you said like if somebody like, like, shut your mouth right confides <laughs> in you that's another you know me and my friend we always talk about this we're like why do these women talk so much mm -hmm. like i just told you something do i have to put a disclaimer after every single thing that i tell you like don't repeat this or don't go back and say this because I just want to keep it here. Like, exactly. I mean, it's ridiculous. But it would make for boring television right. if they were all telling stories and, I know, I <laughs> and know. not sharing it or <laughs> I know. That's what I say. I being said, gossip girls. So we it, gotta <laughs> Yeah, they're getting a check, so the check is making them, you know, do these things. Right. So right. that's why. But it really annoys me. Yeah. Um, I agree. Hencha, she, that was really dirty what she did to Astrid. I mean, mm -mm, agree with the guy. Yeah. Like, no. Well, and I just feel like she totally played into what everyone thought from the beginning about her, which doesn't necessarily help her cause with these women. You know what I mean? Yep. And where it's like, she's just going to be an opportunist and swoop in wherever. And now that she's gotten to be good friends with all of them, to go and do something like this is really reckless i think and it doesn't help make her look any better yeah i agree that was terrible i was like oh my yeah. god then now she really does look like a hoochie 
I mean, yeah, exactly. Mm-mm, not a good. I did one. like, I did like Matisha. Is it Matisha or yeah. Matisha? Mm-hmm. She called her out on it in the store. Like, what are you doing? You yes. know, like I liked that. At least there was some sort of person there to try to talk some sense into her. I mean, I think she ended up encouraging her later on when they got on the phone, but at the yes. same time, like there was, <laughs> there was a moment of sanity there where I was like, okay, like that's good. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was crazy. And, um, when they had the fight and, um, Astrid threw the drink in his yeah. face. Oh my God. Yes. That I was... didn't see that coming. I'll be honest. I'm surprised she did that because Hench is kind Me too. Of, you know, like, she's about, yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, she gets hot real quick. Yeah, and she's, like, a big girl. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. She worked out, like, crazy. So You know, I was telling someone, you know, in the finale of season one where they were in Croatia mm-hmm. and they were all drunk and Hench ended up going after them. Mm-hmm. I was like, I think that's like one of the first real fights I've seen yeah. <laughs> where like the producers, nobody saw it coming. You know, right. she just got hot so fast. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this girl is hot, yeah. you know, where she just gets so angry and aggressive. And mm-hmm. so I was really surprised when Astrid threw that drink. So I was like, haven't you already been in this situation before? Right. Or you would, Go after her like this? I think everybody was surprised. They were like, girl, you threw that at her. <laughs> like, of all people, uh, maybe that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the thing that um, was most surprising to me was to learn that um, Hencha comes from, you know, this family where she lived this charm. Mm-hmm. life, Right? Right. Cause she's yeah, I always, think her friends were really surprised yeah, to hear that, too. Yeah, because she's always crying a river uh-huh. that, you know, about her upbringing or whatever. I don't know. She's, to me, I never pictured her as coming from, you know, a well-to-do family. Right. I didn't get that picture either. Yeah. She's always like, woe is me. So mm-hmm. that was very interesting. Yeah. So I agree. We'll see how that plays out, huh? Yeah. And her mom <laughs> definitely put her on blast and was like, mm-hmm. you were spoiled. That's the bottom line. Like, don't even try it. Yeah. So. Stop playing the victim. Right. So um, what do you think of Ashley's mother-in-law? Isn't she like the worst? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny. So I was listening to your podcast with the bloomerant and you mentioned oh, yes. <laughs> her spending so much money on these flowers and the mom's reaction Isn't that crazy? was priceless oh, i think she pretty much had the same face i did when i heard that budget and i was like yes. what i was like what the hell they spend that much money on flowers All right but i mean i guess you know They've got the money for it, but it right. just seems like so much. Exactly. And that's why that business that those women have is awesome for something like that, right? You can mm-hmm. use those flowers again. Exactly. I love that interview. I'd never heard of them before. So Me that was great neither. exposure. Yes, yeah. That was awesome. Um, yeah. So um, who else? Oh, Faven. Faven. Mm. She's the new one added to the cast. I think she came out guns a blazing being yeah. too extra and mm-hmm. she really needed to fall back a little bit just a little I bit. think a little bit and she's gunning pretty hard for Kayla yes why which I don't yeah I think it's it's too much at this point like Kayla really hasn't done anything, anything that bad to deserve you know that level of aggression towards no. her I think she's entitled to her opinion everybody else has an opinion so why can't she say hers like I don't get it yeah I agree and Faven is a little bit controlling Yes. Of the group dynamic. Yeah. She came in pretty strong. She came in. For a newcomer. Right. But I guess because she has an existing relationship with the other girls, she feels like I could do whatever I want because I know that these girls are my girls and that's it. That's true. You know? Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that makes it different for her as opposed to other women who come in to cast and they they don't really have a pre-existing relationship with anyone. So... Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, Yeah, but I can't wait to see um, what happens. I was glad that um, Kayla and Astrid made up. Um, Yes, I think the Bachelorette episode is going to be fun. That's coming up. Yeah. You know, they're just, it's a fun group to watch together. And 
you know, there is genuine friendship between Darnell and Ashley, which I really like to see. Yeah. You know, I loved when they went into the hotel room and she had like all her favorite things. Like Ashley freaking out over bacon is one of my favorite <laughs> things to watch. I know. So good. <laughs> she loves food. Yeah, she does. And you see how small she is. I, hate I know. Her. Right? Oh, it's not fair. No, it's not. She eats anything and everything. She- <laughs> and she's so slim. Lucky. You know, we cover a lot of shows for the website, and normally they're not really eating, but these girls, whenever they're out, they're de- like definitely eating their meals wherever they go. I love seeing that. Wow. It's not just staged, that they're just enjoying their food. <laughs> so back to, you know, that point you just made. So do you ever, like, go out and are on location when they're actually shooting? And, like, have you we had? Ever- We've seen them shooting um, here in L.A. We just saw Lala Kent shooting here in L.A., I think, for the new Vanderpump Rules oh. season. But, no, not normally. I don't come across it very often. Oh, it just okay. depends. Yeah. Yeah. You should try to get. You should try to hook that up, girl. All right. See? I would love to know where they're filming in advance. <laughs> yeah. You better reach out to their people and be like, "Listen, <laughs> taste the reality, and I want to taste this reality for real." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I need the inside scoop. Exactly. From the get-go. Seriously. Have you ever been to um, what's that restaurant from Vanderpump? The one, sir. Sir. Yeah. I have. Do, do yes. you like? Is the food good? Do you like it? It's pretty good. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of fans there, so it's crowded. And sure. it was interesting because a lot of people had come for a special occasion and they've seen it on the show. So it yeah. definitely has a fan appeal. So it's hard to get into in that yeah. regards. But the food is pretty good and the drinks, you know. Are what about Pump? Have you drunk? been to Pump? I have. I've been to all three, Villa Blanca, Pump, and Sir. Wow. Pump is fun. The decor is really neat in there. Nice. See, yeah. that's so interesting. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever... Okay, the people that are on these reality shows, do they really work there like Monday through Friday when they're not shooting? That I don't know. I would be curious. I would venture to guess they do work there a little bit, but probably not as much anymore as they make it seem. Right. Hmm. I'll tell you, these reality shows. Right. Have you ever been to a place that you saw on a reality show? I have not. Oh. I See, now when you watch the shows, you're going to have to pay attention. I know, I do. Like, when they were shooting, um, and because I live in Jersey, so when they shoot, like, uh, in New York, the love and hip-hop of New York, they go to all of these places, you know, in New York. And sometimes I know, like, they were shooting at Milk River or wherever, I think. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were going there because, oh, they shot at, you know, Love and Hip right. over here. So it's true. Like, people really are fascinated by that. But I personally haven't been. And if I have been in any of the restaurants where they shot something, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But um, it is pretty Do interesting. You kn- you know, it's funny, we um, we went to this gelato place in Jersey that is right next to a cemetery, mm-hmm. and it was on Real Housewives of New Jersey, and we ended up doing a review, the gelato was awesome, really? and yeah, and then we ended up sharing it on social media, and it got one of the highest, like, viral shares from a business because they shared it on their page and then all their fans went crazy because they were just so in love with their gelato and they have a big following and we had no idea we just happened to be going around taking photos and you know to get more photos for the website okay. and we were like hey this place looks interesting and it was on the website so of course we had to stop and try and um, so it was kind of fun that you know this one little tiny gelato place in Jersey we got all of this fan traction from because there are people you know people that go there just love their wow. gelato so much and they you know now clicked you, on our article you gotta come back because now Teresa and her brother and her sister-in-law have a restaurant yeah so, exactly you know you gotta get that stuff <laughs> I know and that is something that we're trying to do too is cover all the 
businesses of these reality yeah, stars the because stores. so many of them are using the platform to build their own businesses. So we want to highlight that in a positive way since they're all Absolutely. You entrepreneurs. Go to Atlanta, you got to get Nini's store. You got to get mm-hmm. Candy's restaurant. I mean, like, you guys got a lot of work to do. You got busy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're going to have to send you out to some. Help That's us out. That's right. <laughs> I'll definitely go in. Dang, I, mean, right. I want to taste the reality. And... There you go. <laughs> go get some pizza for us, will you? Exactly. <laughs> so, um, Black Ink of Chicago. Yes. Now, Kat has been a bad girl. Mm. Mm. What mm-hmm. the hell? Who knew? Remember when that show first premiered? And I don't know if you saw it from the begin, like the first premiere of it, right? But I, I love these dirty, gritty shows. I just love them, right? <laughs> my, my friend who I do the, the wrap up with usually, she was like, oh my God, I love how um, Black Ink of Chicago, everybody looks like they take a bath. Whereas, <laughs> you know, New York looked really gritty when they first came out. So That's funny. when they first came out, Kat was kind of like, you know, I work here and I'm with all these guys and I'm not trying to talk to anybody because I'm all about my business. And, you know, so I was like, oh, my gosh, this, that's so amazing. This girl, she tats. She does an amazing mm-hmm. job. She's good looking and she's not letting any of these guys touch her. Mm. And then fast forward to <laughs> season three. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? They're like, Van kissed her, Four slept with her, and her and Ryan are like hooking up. I'm like, mm-hmm. OMG. Like, seriously? Now, apparently, there was a lot of tension building in those previous seasons. Right. So, no <laughs> wonder everything got so like tense with her, and she ended up moving to LA. Yeah, that's just crazy. But I think next um, the next episode when they come back next week, she's going to be going off on like Ryan because and then the thing to me is that she's always saying like you try to make this seem like it was something else. And you no, 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 honey, Mm. you're being played. (laughs) Pay attention. (laughs) Right. Yes. Exactly. And I feel like Ryan, especially this last episode, like he was just so stressed. I know. <laughs> like, oh my God. like he knows like all of this is catching up with him. <laughs> oh, no, I feel so bad for him. He's so hot though. Isn't he cute? He's he cute. is cute. Yeah. I like him. I'm not. Yeah. I'm... I don't know. There's just something about him that like he's, I just think he's so cute. But uh, I don't know. And I always thought he was like this really good guy. But, you know, men are men. Yeah. So. Well, and I kind of wonder after a few seasons if they have to get a little messier, you know, and up the drama factor. Oh, please. I feel like they always <laughs> had enough drama going on between Don and his crazy baby mama now wife. Uh, right. That Ashley is a piece of work. In the first oh episode, she's telling, um, what's her name? Um, Charmaine's man. Oh, she's, she, um, yeah, she was trying to get with my man. Mm-hmm. Like, who does that? <laughs> She is a strong force, that woman. She's and now crazy. with this new baby. Right. And her shopping sprees. And excuse me, but um, he I, he's like Tommy from, um, you know, Martin to me. Rest in peace, Tommy. Uh, you know, we always used to be like, well, what's Tommy's job? Where where does he work? <laughs> I feel like. Well, now he's piercing now, I guess. Right. right? Before, he got a certificate. <laughs> right. But before that, honestly, where was he working? Come yeah, on. yeah. I have no idea. Who knew? He was just hanging out at the shop. And you have the nerve to come home and be like, I'm going to quit my job. Like as if he works on Wall Street. Right. Girl, bye. She's and now she's going to wants to buy this like $1,500 stroller. Yes. She needs to have several seats. Not one. Yeah. Several. <laughs> <laughs> In the stroller. <laughs> In the stroller. <laughs> she's some people, I swear, it's like they live this fantasy life in there yes it's like uh, it's unbelievable because honestly i don't think that he really wanted to marry that girl Mm. i think that he married her because she made it clear if you're not with me you're not with your kids and that's it and i think he really loves being a dad and he wants to be with his son and bigger than all of that i'm gonna venture out to say all right that I think that 
she provides a place to live and those kinds of things. And life is just a lot mm-hmm. easier staying put. And some men are I'd lazy. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'd agree with so that. So they'll settle until they can't take it anymore or until mm-hmm. life changes for them and they're in a position where they can make whatever decision they want. And then they're like, you know what? I'm done. But what do you think that decision would be for him at this point? I think if... Because, I mean, I feel like she's really tested quite a few <laughs> a few things. So what do you think would be his breaking point? Well, I think for him to leave or for him to really be honest with how he feels and what he really wants for his life, I think his life would have to change financially. I think right. that he would have to be on some come up like... I don't know, just making money left and right from uh, from opportunities and be in a place where he can say, I'm not doing this anymore and you're not going to take my son because I'm going to take you to court and I'll take my son. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. So I think if things like, if that changed for him, he would be more able to, you know, stand up and say, I'm not taking your shit anymore. But I mm. think because she was the breadwinner, she's the one who has the home. Remember when they first got into it, she kicked him out of the house. He didn't have any place to go. He had to go stay with his brother. And then she was like, and you can't see your son. Like, if you don't want me, you don't want him. Like, that whole thing. That's just not right. But a lot yeah. of women do that. Yeah. You know? That is quite the power trip. Well, men do that to women, too. But Yeah, I mean... Men do a lot of stuff to us. <laughs> <laughs> it works both ways. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's let just me, more me, shocking to see right. it go the other way, right? Let me clean that up. Men do a lot of grimy stuff, so I'm not defending them. <laughs> I'm just saying, in this instance, it just seems like to me, and that's just my opinion. Yeah, no disrespect to them. I can see that. You know, I mean that that might be how it's playing out. How it's being how edited could you, how to could you be with someone and you claim that you love this person and you're at the shop screwing Charmaine and then you had you were screwing somebody else because guess what he has a baby that was what younger than his son that he had with her mm. so how much yeah. do you love me right no that's true it's hard to go back from I think yeah and somebody's had another kid with somebody else depending then, on the situation yeah and even at the bachelor party uh did you see that when he went in the room no the i didn't see that oh honey mm-mm. he went what happened they went to dr dominican republic and uh-huh. they had like um you know this nice big house and of course charmaine was running around naked the whole time because she is a <laughs> hot mess she is and um they had they um, had a bachelor bachelor party for him, and they had these girls come, these local girls, and um, let's just say that they were not, you know, uh, I don't know what the average stripper is, but I know when I go to the regular strip club, you can't do <laughs> you can't do much, right? You might be able to like, you know, touch, right. but there there's some rules on, in right, place, right, yeah, right, yeah, you know. But um, he went in a bedroom with one of the strippers and there were noises. Now, I know they edit things and they make it look a certain way. But excuse me, my fiance better not be going in a room with any strippers or anybody and closing the door. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. It's a no. It's a hard no. Yeah. So and he was doing this like a, a couple days before the wedding. Mm. And then she came and her brother was at the bachelor party and her brother happened to show her some videos and she was mad and she was crying and she still married him. He was late coming to the wedding like it was a disaster. Mm. And she still married him because in her mind, this is definite. This is what I want. I don't care what you say. We're going to be a happy family. Right. So they're both under this like pretense that they're settling, but for all their no, right reasons think, in their head in a way like she doesn't want to not be married you do yeah i think she loves him and she wants to be with him by any means necessary i feel like a lot of women fall into that trap where they i don't know it's like they are they are afraid to let go and possibly face the unknown so they'd rather settle for the evil that they know rather mm. than to say yeah that's true i'm not gonna take this crap get out of my damn house 
come pick up your son so I can have some time myself and we're done. You know, they, mm-hmm. rather, they feel like, oh, I'm going to be alone. I'm going to be lonely and no, I'm not going to get anyone. I'm not going to have anyone. So I'll just forgive him and we'll work it out. But yeah, or they think they're doing it for the kids. Well, maybe, maybe that too. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I've learned, I've learned, I've been burned and I've learned from experience that. Haven't we all? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It it doesn't really change and you have to take care of you. Right. And if you don't, if you, if you don't take care of you, it's hard to take care of the kids because, you know, when you're all messed up emotionally and mentally, how, how, how are you taking care of your kids? Right. It's difficult. So. Or showing them how to be strong in that right. way. Right, yes. And showing them how to be strong, especially when you have girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know. I wish them well, but they were hot mess. Yeah. And the new <laughs> girl, Liliana, what do you think of her? She's interesting. She's <laughs> adding a little flavor to the show, don't you think? Yeah, I do. I like her. Doesn't she always look drunk, I like though? Her. I feel like she is. <laughs> I don't even think that's a, <laughs> so a look. I think she really is. <laughs> she's so funny. I, I just, I like her because she's just like, whatever. I don't give a damn. Like, I love that attitude. But yeah, she, cause she needs to take it down a little bit with Junior because I feel like she just spazzes out over any little thing. But it's from being hurt. Right. Right. Yeah, she's, she's hot. But I don't think she's uh, malicious, you know, like they tried to kind of make it seem that way with the drama with her and Cobra a little bit, you know, but yeah. I'm glad she came around and yeah, owned up to it. it. Right. Yeah. Because, come on. That was disrespectful. Seriously. That was disrespectful. Just disgusting. Like get your nasty butt off the counter. That like, how does it even go that quick when someone else is in the room? Like just, that just doesn't happen. Cause she was, drunk. I would hope not anyway. <laughs> well, that's true. You're right. <laughs> I forgot about that. They had been drinking before he right. came in. <laughs> She was drunk. Yes, you're right. You know when the liquor's in your system, honey. You're right. <laughs> anything goes. Everyone else disappears. <laughs> right. So I think that's what it was. <laughs> but that was funny. I was speaking of liquor in the system. My God, with Cobra and her date oh with my Velvet. Goodness. I think what? she. I think she stole the watch. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Cause that was she looked. She so kind of had a guilty face when yes. she was confronted about it. Like she was not acting like somebody that just accidentally lost it. Plus, if you accidentally lost it, wouldn't you tell the person the next day? Well, that's not just like when you know they go to discover the bag that the watch isn't there. That's what makes it right. shady to me. Cobra should have been like, "Oh my god, I can't find this watch." But maybe she thought she had the watch, and then all of a sudden, when she started to look for it, she realized it was gone because homegirl robbed her. Right. Ooh. Mm-hmm. You think so? I think she did because because she jumped in so quick, right? And she, yes, she don't know nothing true. about that damn watch. I don't know why uh, you keep asking her. Yeah, because I still. Uh, <laughs> that's very true. Maybe that was her point all along: get her junk and steal her watch, right? Because that was just because oh. she came on so strong. She surely did and quick. And, <laughs> yes, she did. Yes, that moved quickly. Yeah. So. I don't know. We'll I know. The, the next part of the season looks crazy, though. I know. Just from the trailer. I'm so like, good. oh, damn. More to come. Oh, Before we move on to Housewives of Orange County, Van and his girlfriend, isn't that messed up how he gave her a ring box with a key in it? Isn't it messed up that they tried to mug her in a supermarket yes. parking lot? Uh, yes. <laughs> I First of all, so I would have been so angry. I wouldn't have been able to listen to anything they were saying. Yeah. Who does that in Chicago? <laughs> Who like, really? does Right? I mean, yeah. don't scare me. They took That's it not romantic. <laughs> That's not a way to win me back. No. Yeah, that was not a good idea. And then like, when he, he pulls out the box. Like, of all boxes, why would you bring a ring box? Just give her, like, a freaking, I don't know, a necklace box or something. But exactly that's just that's just toying with her emotions exactly that is the phrase i was looking for yes and the the daughter i think is what won her back to be honest Mm-hmm. yep but so i don't know, I don't know that they're on stable footing to jump right back into her moving back yeah because she wants marriage and he's saying he's not ready so i mean if they've been together for eight years and 
you know, she wants to get married and you're still not ready. Well, what's going to make you ready? I don't exactly. Understand. And just giving a key back is like, hey, come back to the same situation and I'm not committing to anything more. So what is that really solved? Yeah, I don't get it. I really mm. don't. I think it's just so ridiculous. Men get on my nerves. <laughs> 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 Real Housewives of Orange County. Yes. Um, the, I don't know that whole. Video. How are you liking this season? I, I feel like people. A lot of people are bored with it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think Shannon is like crazy. Did you see that Kelly and her husband are getting divorced? Yes. Did you see her go off on Twitter today? No. What? what oh she yeah, she blasted someone that shared a. I tweeted a Radar Online article, which are usually wrong anyways, you know, fake news. But anyway, she just like went off on this guy for tweeting it and then was accusing him of being like a friend of Tamara. And that's the reason why he's like spreading lies. Oh, so what, her and Tamara are not friends anymore? I, I don't know. I texted my friend. I was like, well, I just watched you know, Monday's episode where they seem like they're getting along. I didn't know anything happened between them. So I don't know where that came from. I'm confused about the whole thing. But yeah, they're getting a divorce, apparently. They need to get a divorce and Shannon needs to get a divorce. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, Shannon's like way overdue. Yeah, absolutely. Her husband looks so miserable. I feel so sorry for him. Yeah. I think think they both are. No, I again, she's trying to hold on. Because she yeah. loves him, but he's done. He has checked mm-hmm. out. He checked out when he checked his thing into somebody else. <laughs> that's, when, that's when he checked out. <laughs> yeah, and he should have just gone through with the whole thing and checking out, not just trying to. But you know what I say? Think? Make it work. I think it's because of the kids, the girls. He's trying to stay until the girls get. You know, I think if he doesn't leave before the girls get big which was it would take a lot of balls for him to just say I'm done. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. He's going to wait until the youngest one turns 18 and then he's outing. I just don't think that's right to do that to kids. Kids are smarter than that. I know. And I feel like you bring so much more attention and anger into a home yeah. by trying to fake it till you make it. Exactly. You know? Just be honest and, 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 you know, like go your separate ways. But I don't know. The interview I did with that lady um, who wrote that book, Bleeding Hearts, when she got a divorce, even though her everybody was so tight knit and close and, you know, it was like amicable and everything, her kids were still like upset about it. Mm. And, you know, they were still like family, like she'd go over there, like everybody loved each other still, like her and her husband were like friends and mm. the kids. What were her about. kids upset about? They I just felt know. like they should be together. I don't know. I asked her, I said, why do you think they took it so hard, even though you guys were still good? And she said she just thinks that kids, when they hear the word divorce, it just brings about a lot of negative emotions. And then it just, you know, I Hmm. don't know. Yeah. But eventually they got over it. So whatever. Well, that's good. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, we all do, right? Yeah, we all do. We (laughs) We all get over these hard things that come across our way in life one way or another. Yeah. Do you think Tamara's husband is how you doing? I mean, gay. <laughs> I, I have the worst gaydar, so I have no idea. I don't know. I mean, either. when I met him, he was very nice. And, you know, and if it works for them, then I don't think anyone should comment on their relationship like that, to be I honest. Know. And I think what? that's just rude. And, you know, if someone whether he is or isn't, it really isn't anyone else's business besides theirs. Exactly. And the thing that makes me so mad about it is that the person who's one of the people who's spreading that rumor was in her wedding. Right. How would you do that? That's not right. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't like that. He said that. And I didn't like that. Vicky repeated that. And I don't Mm -hmm. like that. Vicky said the rumors about Shannon and her husband. Like when someone tells you something in confidence like that. You should never repeat that. And you should never throw that back in someone's face when you're having an argument. That is so low. That, yeah. That is what I find with these reality shows that really irk me is how low the women go when yeah. they're upset. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. Cause, no, that's so true. Yeah. 
It's not. You necessary. would hope if you were really friends, you wouldn't go for the jugular like that. Exactly. And how could you even trust anybody in that situation? Right. So, I mean, I don't know. Tamara and her husband seem happy. They've been together for a while. I don't know why they're, you know, starting those rumors. It's just messed up. But yeah, I don't know. And maybe it's Vicky's like payback for all the Brooks cancer stuff, you know? Well, she maybe she feels like vindictive about like ruining other people's relationships or something. Who knows? I know. Women are so crazy sometimes. <laughs> they can't just be happy, right? No, they are nuts. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But <sighs> I'm kind of sad. I mean, I would like to see Vicky and Tamara friends again. Yeah, they have they were a- they were a lot of fun to watch together. They have um, a good I feel like it is getting just kind of mean back and forth. Yeah, they have a good friendship um, in terms of they have fun together. They have good chemistry, but they're just very vicious to each other. Like, yeah, when, I mean, Tamara is I don't know. She's nice, nasty. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, and very much so. And Vicky can just be downright nasty. Mm-hmm. You know, even when she's your friend, sometimes she just says things that are just so rude. Yeah. So, Do you think she realizes what she says? Yes. I think there are some people that are like that. They just say whatever. Yeah. They don't, they don't like, maliciously mean it. It just comes out. Yeah, they just, they don't even care how it lands. They right. just say whatever they want to say. And they don't care. But those people are usually the most sensitive people. Right. Yeah, and, I agree with and that. And that's the irony of it all, you know? Exactly. So... I don't know. Hmm. I guess you have to figure out if you could deal with that or not. What do you think of the new girl, Peggy? I don't know yet. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I feel like she's starting to try and make her mark now. Mm-hmm. But she's just kind of been there to me. Yeah, I she's kind of bored. She hasn't re- yeah, she hasn't really added much. And no. I feel like her husband was telling her to go upstairs to be a part of the drama. <laughs> like, yeah, like make yourself get, interesting right, you know like get involved. in on this right yeah yeah I don't think she'll be back next season and another thing is I I don't like that they're trying to make a storyline about her cancer it's her decision what she wants to do with her breast and mm-hmm. shut up like well and I feel like that is such a drastic procedure to have done to not have some sort of like doctors wouldn't just do that unless there was real reason. And obviously she has a family history. So exactly, you know, even if they didn't find anything that was actually cancer, if it's something that could turn into that and she wanted to take, you know, the preemptive step, like that's, it's her business. That's her choice. Right. Yeah, but that's it's her health, it's her body and I don't think they would do that if it wasn't nothing, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't like that. I don't like I felt like that was pretty catty as well. Yes. It's just very disgusting. I don't like it. That's not right. Like, oh, does she have cancer or didn't she? Or I don't understand what she's saying. Like, I don't mean, uh, 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 uh. shut up. You don't need to understand what she's saying. Just understand right. that she that's what she had done. Now, shut up. Right. Exactly. Sometimes <laughs> Just I wish it, I like... was a friend at the table because I damn sure would be like in a fight with everybody. <laughs> so I'd be, I'd be like, I love it. You would be like refereeing everybody. Like <laughs> I know. I'd be like, you shut the hell up. You right? need to go home and work on your husband. Like like Kelly said, you need to go home and take care of your baby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was so funny when she said that to Megan. <laughs> I do feel like Kelly's been the most you know, interesting and fun. I liked she's like, her. She's she, like kept it, <laughs> it, kept it going. I liked her when she first came on, but then <laughs> remember when she was at dinner and she said, "You're such a cunt." Like, why don't you? Just <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, she's crazy." But what I don't like about her is how low she goes. She yeah. really goes low, and she I does just don't like it. I just I think that you can. Get your point across and have a conversation without going that low. Yeah. You know? What is it? So what's like, what's your threshold, do you think? For what? For how low someone could go. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> don't talk about people's kids, their husband, mm-hmm. um, health, 
I think mm. there's just certain things that should be off limit. Their livelihood, the way they make their money, you know. I feel like those are really low blows because those are things that people take, you know, very personal. And there's a lot of pride behind those things, mm -hmm. you know. So just keeping it to whatever actions happen yeah, between like, friends at the time. Right. Whatever happens. And if you want to say, well, you, your makeup looks a hot ass mess. You need to go back and, you know, whatever. <laughs> that's right. cool, you know. But don't talk about my kids. Don't talk about... If I'm mm. a bad mom or I'm a good mom. Don't say anything about my kids. Yeah. Don't yeah. talk about my husband, you know, or my marriage. Don't imply anything about my marriage. You know, I, th those things. Well, to me what if you funny. know something about like okay. your friend's husband cheating or something like no, that? Like you go never. straight to the friend or do you talk to somebody else about whether you should talk to your friend about it? If I knew that my friend's husband was cheating because of the way that my husband's friend, like, it's very tight knit and we all hang out together and we're very close. So if I knew that one of the guys was cheating, girls, y'all going to hate me for this, but I ain't saying shit. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> and they listen to so let me just be clear I'm uh oh I hope I didn't <laughs> make you step into it right now <laughs> no and if you guys know that my man is cheating keep it to yourself cause mm. whatever happens in the dark will come out in the light mm. mm -hmm. I truly believe that and so I, don't don't get in the middle of it don't get in the middle of it because a lot of times people you don't know how people are going to deal with things. And sometimes you might think that you're being a friend and you might say, oh, you know, I know that Dave is cheating on you. I saw him with this girl and, you know, whatever. And she'll go home and her and Dave will have it out. And then they'll somehow find their way back to each other or they'll say, we're going to work it out. And then she's going to tell him that you said it. Yeah. You know? Well, and you don't know what the other person knows. That's right. Yeah. So you may be stepping in something right where maybe they're not, they're not really ready to deal with it, but maybe they kind of know. Right. And now that somebody else knows they're embarrassed or, you know, right. they may lash out at you exactly. for it. Exactly. And that's the other side of it, too. They can and most likely will start to hate you. One, because you are bringing something to them. And now that you're bringing it to them, it kind of mm -hmm. forces them to, like, maybe deal with it. And they don't want to. Or right. Two, um, just the fact that you know makes them angry. So then they take it out on you. Yes. Yeah. I'm not saying anything. Totally agree. I'm minding my damn business. I don't know nothing. Don't ask me <laughs> shit. I didn't see shit. I know I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Now, do you think you act differently when you're in social circumstances? Um, no, I think no, yeah. just yeah, yeah. Or you're all friends, yeah, yeah. And I, I think like with these reality shows, I really feel like a lot of it is reality because mm -hmm. honestly, a lot of stuff that goes on, it goes on. Like you know, we all have friends that do certain things that get on our nerves. And we have that one friend that we can say those things to. Yeah. But in our lives, our friends that we're saying those things to knows how to keep their mouth shut. And they're not, Bravo's not giving them a check to say it. Right. So, well, they can't. That would make for kind of boring TV, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I think that's the big difference, you know. But, I mean, think about it. I mean, really, if you're if some of your we all know that one person that's just annoying as hell. And yes, you, you have to be around that person for whatever reason. You know, maybe you work with them. Maybe they're a friend of the family. Maybe they're, you know, your husband's or boyfriend's cousin, sister, whatever. And you just got to deal with it. But if you were given a check and they said, hey, Dana, just do act how you really want to act towards her. Say what you really want to say. Checks in the mail. <laughs> Action. <laughs> you, you'll be like, why don't you just shut the hell up? You don't even know what you're talking about. You know? And that starts yeah. it. That kicks it off. Who's she yeah. talking to? I'm talking to you. Okay. And then we're off. 
<laughs> Would you ever be on a reality show? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. It's I just think scary. it's like it's so much exposure. Yes. That's a lot of exposure. Sometimes I feel sorry for these people, like, just seeing their pictures online and how people pick their pictures apart. All right. Like, I pick my own pictures apart, so I can't imagine. Exactly. You know, like. I don't, I don't need the internet to unleash their fury. I'm hard enough on myself. Exactly. So, and I just think that it just opens up a lot you know, about your life. Mm -hmm. It just puts a lot. So I, I don't think so. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, it, take, it definitely takes a special personality to get out there and do that job, you know, and whatever the motivation is, whether it's they want the notoriety or the check. Yeah, I think it's they're definitely opening themselves up and their families. Yeah, I think it's the exposure. A lot of these people have businesses and things that they want to take to the next level mm -hmm. so they do it you know but a lot of people lose their marriages behind it but yep. I don't think that that's a bad thing I think sometimes I think everything in our life happens for a reason and you know it takes us to that next level or next phase in our life so I couldn't I, agree more yeah so I, I don't know so I do love though how they're using you know I how they're using their platform for business. Cause I feel like all of them are starting a business of some sort. And so much of the show is focusing on all the things that they're working on outside of this drama. So yes. in that regards, I feel like it's a positive platform to see all these female entrepreneurs coming out of the housewives franchise. It's so interesting that you say that because I was, um, I watch, I don't really watch it. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called Ball Baller Wives. No, I haven't watched that one yet okay, on VH1. So, yes. So I watched like a half an episode and then I started to watch, you know, a little bit of it. And the girl who's married to Michael Vick, she has mm. a problem with another girl who lives like across from her, who she brought onto the show. And um, her, their husbands are friends. So she, someone asked her, you know, that, are you guys friends? And she said, no, she's not my friend. Um, you know, we know each other. We're friendly, but she's not my friend. So I don't know what happened. They had some scene and she gets into an argument with um, the, the girl who's married to Michael Vick. I can't remember her name. Her friend. And um, the girl throws a drink on her, you know, Michael Vick's wife's friend and then her and Michael Vick's wife get into an argument and the girl you know something comes up about the girl's mother and she said I don't care F your mother or whatever and she goes no seriously my mom just passed away and she was like I don't <gasps> care I don't care I'm glad she's dead or something like that I don't know like oh it was crazy that's awful. yeah it was really crazy so um fast forward um that girl, Michael Vick's wife, was on um, Lip Service. It's another podcast that I listen to. And she was saying how she, her and her friend created the show to kind of, um, you know, showcase all of the great things that they're doing in their lives. Like, we're not just married to these, these athletes. You know, we have our own aspirations and dreams, and we're doing all of these different things, too. And she said, I don't know how it turned into this, though. She's like, I brought, mm. I brought that girl on to the show. We know each other. No, we're not friends. Because, you know, friends, I take that very seriously. But we're friendly. And then she gets on the show. The camera comes on. And it's like this total different person. Mm. So I thought that was so interesting what you just said. And then I'm thinking back to, you know, her trying to use this platform for one thing, bringing all these people. And then. It seems like the common theme there is is like all of the girls are trying to band together and like form this alliance against her, hmm. who is one uh, the one who pitched the show, <laughs> brought everyone together, <laughs> and now they're all trying to like gang up against her. And it's the very same thing that happened with Married to Medicine. I don't know if yeah. you ever watched that one, but Mariah was the one who she, you know, she's an executive producer. She pitched the show. She brought everyone together. And then they actually did form an alliance and kicked her off. 
Yeah, I saw she posted something recently yes. about not being on this new season. Right. The first season she was on, she was friends with everybody. She was the focal point. And then they flipped the script on her. And then the second season, she was not on it. The third season, she made little cameo appearances here and there. And now this season, she's saying that, you know, they're not really, you know. So it's so interesting. Mm-hmm. How, yeah. You know, you have a, a, a thought in mind to say, hey, I want to bring this show. I want us to, you know, move our businesses forward. And I want to do this. I want to do that. And the camera comes on. And all of a sudden, someone who you thought, you know, you were cool with just starts going off on you. So that's what reality TV can bring out. Opportunists. Right. The worst in people. The worst. Yeah. Yeah. So I no thanks. I just want my little podcast to be successful. <laughs> I love talking to people and finding yeah. out, you know, what motivates them, what they love to do, finding their passions, how they got to that place. And, you know, that's what I love doing. So. And your positive messages. Yeah, I feel like you're very positive pop culture. You yes. know, you keep it, keep it light, but keep it right. good and motivational. So right, and you see, that's what we need. People more of. like me have the least followers, right? But people <laughs> who are like pushing all the nonsense and the craziness and the negativity, those people get so many followers. It's amazing. Even the celebrities themselves, like people will be saying, oh, look at this great picture of such and such. They'll never like something like that. But let someone say, oh, he's a jerk or he screwed yep. this person. And then they're coming back at you. You know, it's right. like, I yeah. don't understand the psyche. It's very interesting to me. But yep, it's I'm just how our cultures like evolved with media and, yeah. and and entertainment. I think with a lot of these reality shows, it is about the drama that you bring and yeah. whoever is the craziest gets the most attention. It's sad, but I'll be tuning in. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, guys, so I had such a good time talking to you today, Dana. Yeah, thank, thank you. So Me too. Before I let you go, I ask all my guests, what was your oh hell no moment of the day? And before you tell yours, I never really share mine, but I have to share mine today. Okay? Go for it. So let me tell you what happened to me. I'm at work because, you know, I got a nine to five. Right. And um, this girl comes to my desk and, we're sh you know, we're talking and she's like, oh, what did you do to lose weight? Now, I'm not <laughs> a big person, but I'm a little thick in the thighs and, you know, I, whatever. But I yeah. lost a little bit of weight because I love carnival. And recently I started going to carnival. So this this, you know, this year I went to carnival in Jamaica and I was like, OK, I need to lose weight because I, I got this costume that was like really, you know, skimpy and I oh. did not look good in it. That's why I did not post <laughs> pictures. I'm just keeping it real. I was just going to say, I didn't see any pictures. <laughs> and you won't, girl, because <laughs> <laughs> I looked a hot mess. Oh, no. At least I think I did. But I mean, I think we're our you're own probably worst being critics. more critical of yourself. Yes, yes. Yes. But I did not get to where I wanted to be. So, okay. um. I but I did lose weight. And then after that, I lost a little bit more weight. So she was like, Oh, you know, I noticed that you lost weight. What have you been doing? So I said to her and she's like a really thick girl. So okay, I'm like, Okay, I said, Look, you just got to cut, you know, your portions, you know, s slow down on the carbs, um, work out, you know, um, cut your sugars, you know, you don't have to go crazy, just do a little bit at a time, you know, don't shock your body into like some craziness. So she's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. So then she says, um, yeah, because I really noticed that you lost weight. You know, I mean, actually, you lost even more weight. And now that I'm looking at you, um, your face looks um, very like, like, um, like hungry. Like, uh, oh. like <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> She was like hungry. <laughs> yes. She said I looked hungry and um, like, oh, wait, I have to find th this what she said, because after she said my co-worker was like, listen, he left and he was like, how dare her? That is so rude. I cannot believe she said that to you. I had to leave my desk. He was like, but you handled it really well. I, I really have to look for what she said because he wrote. Um, 
she said, you look like you need to eat. Um, stop, stop losing weight because you need to eat some more. You look, you look like you're, you know, like you're hungry and, um, something else. I can't remember the other thing that she said. Oh my said. gosh. So I was like, really? Yeah. Yeah. She said, I look. Are hungry. you friends where she feels like, feels like she could just say these things or do you feel like, well, I mean, I don't really consider her a friend friend at work i mean we work closely together on some on some on some, on some projects you know we work on some projects together and um you know we're cool i'm a cool girl i kind of yeah know, bounce around and just sure you know, whatever but damn i was like <laughs> oh, well okay then i said actually i i'm not dieting anymore and um uh, okay <laughs> Yeah, is that an odd backhanded compliment or No, she straight up told me you need to you need to start yeah. eating cuz you look hungry. Mm. And in my head I was like, "Oh hell no." Really? <laughs> <laughs> hell no. <laughs> but I just I'm going to eat off. you up. <laughs> right. I just played it off and was like, "Okay." So, share with me. That's a good one. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> You might not be able to top mine, but... No, that's a good one. Yeah. No one's telling me I look hungry. <laughs> that's actually my... <laughs> my oh hell no is every day, you know, because I'm really hyper-focused and I need to push myself to take breaks and I need to be more physically active. I feel like I'm in front of a screen all the time. It's my phone, it's my computer, it's the TV. And so I'm trying to force myself to really, like, get more active in my day. So... My oh hell no moment is always, oh, I don't need to go work out for 30 minutes. Right. And it's like, oh hell no, you need to get up and go, like yeah. stop. So it's more my internal monologue than anyone coming up and saying anything to me right now. But yeah, that is a good one. Yours takes the cake and I'm glad you shared that. Yes, that was terrible. But you know, it is what it is. They're always coming at me at work. I, I don't know. I must have a sign on my back. <laughs> you know, it's just funny how people feel like they can comment on things, Again. you know, even, remember? Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's just like, okay, that's what I'm telling you. Some people are like that. They just don't have a filter. They think it's okay. They don't care. I did a podcast a couple of months, like before when I was, cause when I started this, I was just talking, you know, just talking mm -hmm. about my daily experiences and things like that. And then I kind of shift the focus and wanted to really start interviewing people. So one day at work, this girl told me I gained weight. <laughs> you can't win. Exactly. <laughs> oh, what happened? Isn't it funny, though, that it's women? Yes. Like, we feel like ugh, we're so hard on ourselves, and yet we feel like it's okay to go tell another woman, you look hungry, or you look like you've put on some pounds. And right. So like, No, just let me have my experience. I'm well aware of where I'm at. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. So... I can't win. They're always trying me at work, girl. Always. <laughs> it sounds like it. Yeah. So, so tomorrow you're going to go eat something in front of her? Um, no. <laughs> I mean, I was kind of hungry because I didn't have a big... <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, well, maybe she was just picking up on that. Maybe, but I don't think my face looked like I was hungry. Like, I don't even Were know you what having, like, a like. Snickers moment where, like, you're not you unless you... <laughs> No, absolutely not. I don't know. That was really weird, but whatever. So, right. thanks again for joining me on the Oh Hell No podcast, and I wish you much luck with Taste of Reality. And, Thank you. You know, you're more than welcome to come back anytime and do the reality wrap up with me. So I would love to. I've really enjoyed it. So yeah, Len, anytime SK can't make it, I'm in. Absolutely. Thanks, Dana. All right. Thank you.